right? Bruce has a good question here. Can a person in mortal sin practice contemplative prayer? Good question. So uh, there are two types of contemplative prayer in the Catholic tradition. There's what's called acquired contemplation and infused contemplation. So acquired contemplation is a, a form of contemplation or contemplative prayer that is m more natural. Obviously, it's, it's prayer, so there's connect, a connection with the divine, but its principle is really a natural one. The person has calmed themselves down and um, you know, is in this state of, of meditation, contemplation, and there's a great simplicity to the prayer at that time. Um, but because it is based mostly in, in natural things, you can get into that state, just like, you know, people who are doing yoga or Buddhist or things of that sort can hit this kind of type of contemplation um, by natural means. Now, there's the whole question of how much prayer is really possible uh, when you're in the state of mortal sin. Obviously, God, God still listens to the sinner. He hears the, the cry. Of, of, of everybody, he hears the prayer of everybody. Um, but the union with God obviously is very limited at that uh, point because we don't have we don't have sanctifying grace, but God still can give us the actual grace to pray um, and to, to speak to him at that time. Uh, when it comes to infused contemplation, infused contemplation is primarily, um, it has a, a, a divine principle, a more divine principle than uh, acquired contemplation. And so an infused contemplation, if it were to, to happen while a person was in the state of mortal sin, it would be very extraordinary. Um, so it would be by some uh, you know, extraordinary act of God to place the person into that situation and to, to infuse them with contemplative prayer. But ordinarily, it would only be a person in the state of grace who has the supernatural life already, who would have that experience of infused contemplation. Good question.